I'm Robert Hindleiter. On Memorial Day of 2009, I had sudden hearing loss on my right side. Uh, just like throwing a light switch. I lost my hearing, my balance, and my uh, mental chemical stability. I couldn't stand up, I couldn't walk, uh, I couldn't stay awake. It threw me into a uh, big depression. And I'd always had been kind of negative on depressions before because I figured people just weren't strong. But until that hits you, uh, you really don't understand the traumatic experience you go through through that and I end up being hospitalized about 10 days in order to recover from that situation. This video is an audio test of my hearing after I've had the BP100 for about six months so they can make adjustments in the uh, BP100 hearing aid. Okay, we're just going to do a normal hearing test. Um, we'll start with the better ear first. Since he has the implant on the right, we'll start with the left ear. We'll just start your normal range. You heard it, so we'll go down. I don't know how much you need to narrate. Um, a lot, because I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Just tell me, you know, it's like you like you're explaining it to somebody that has no idea. Okay. Because the viewer, they're not gonna know. I'm not going to know how to edit this if I don't know what in the heck you're doing. Okay. Okay. So we're just going down in um, 10 decibel levels, decadecibel levels. Okay. Till we find a good spot. That's the lowest spot that he hears. So it looks like for this frequency, 1,000 hertz, it's 20. So I'm just going to mark it here. Can document it later. Then I'll go up to 2000 and we'll do the same thing. Start a little bit louder and then we'll go down in 10 until. So the frequency stays at a thousand decibels, but, or I'm sorry, at a, at a thousand uh, hertz, but the decibel range decreases? We do, we go up and down in decibel levels for each frequency. Oh, okay. That we're doing. So I just did 1000. And then 2,000, we got him at 20 again, so I'll mark that there. And then we'll go to 3. So go up a little bit till I get him. Okay, there we go. Now we'll go down in 10. We didn't respond, so we'll go up. There, he responded. So we'll do it one more time to make sure. Okay. So I got him at 40 decibels for 3,000 hertz. So now we'll do 4,000. Get it, so I'll get it loud enough. There we go. Got him again, so I'll go down. Didn't, so I'll go up. I get in there, up again. There, I got him at 55 twice for 4,000. So we'll take that. I guess textbook, technically, you should do it three times, but yeah, twice is usually good enough. There we go. So as the frequency enough. increases, he his hearing decreases. He can't hear those higher frequencies. Mm -hmm. That's pretty typical with, uh, especially with people who are older, the higher frequencies will start going down mm -hmm. before uh, the lower ones will. Normally, the typical range is that we're going to test from 250 hertz all the way up to 8,000. Okay. That's usually in the typical battery, and we usually go in octaves. So we'll do, um, I did it, I'll start in the middle because mm -hmm. that's usually the best place where most people can hear. So we'll start at 1,000, then we'll go to 2,000, and then we'll actually do the inner octaves for 3,000 and 6,000 Okay. because um, a lot of speech information is there, and so it helps to have information on how they're hearing speech mm -hmm. okay. in those pitches. So 
Um, so then I went all the way up to 8,000, got him at 80. So now we'll jump down to 250 and we'll see if we can get him here. There we go. So we'll go down again. I got him at 30 there. So we'll do 50, 500. There we go. So we'll go down. And down again. There we go. Got him at 25 there. Okay. So then, now that we usually we want to start with the Goodyear because that gives us kind of a good baseline. Um, and then we will jump over to the other ear and see if we can get anything out of this one. So I'll go back to 1,000 hertz. We'll probably jump up a little bit higher here. And then we'll see if we can get anything. There we got something at 80. Not at 70. Not 75. So that's twice at 80 for a thousand hertz in the right ear. So then we'll go to 2,000. Got him. Got him at 85 there. Most of the time, let's see. Yeah. How high do you go on the decibels? It's 80? No, the this equipment right here typically cuts off it. It's a little bit different for different frequencies, depending on what it was calibrated for. But usually, it doesn't. Uh, no audiometer will go past like 115. Yeah, because that's it's loud. Usually, yeah. I mean, that's that's hearing damage, isn't it? Uh, uh, at 120 is yeah. when you start. You can go up to 115 without any actual damage. We have. I don't know if we have it here in this office, but I have used it before where um, we'll have an audiogram that will just look like the regular audiogram but then instead of it being blank or having X and O's on it then it has pictures of different sounds oh, okay. at the different frequencies and intensities that they have each of them so a lawnmower is going to be somewhere over here yeah. whereas someone whispering is going to be somewhere over here okay so I'm sure Google. <laughs> yes, Google. Yeah. Google has everything. All of it. Has it all. So. Let's see. so we're not getting any response now in the right ear at 4,000. And that's at 115. So we'll just mark it on here. No response. So see now for 6,000, this audiometer will only go up to 110. Okay. okay. Got a response at 110 for this one. And then for 2,000 it only goes up to 105. which he's not responding it there, so mark it. There's no response. We'll jump to 250. There we go. And got him at 75. For 250. And 80 for 500. So now, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and then um, some of these 
you can have crossover between the head to where actually the other ear could be responding for this ear because there's it's so much louder that it's actually moving over to the other ear. So we're going to go back and do a little testing where we, it's called masking. Basically we'll cover up the other ear with some sound and then um, play the beeps again and see if we can get the same results. Okay. Most likely I think we will get something different. We will start back at Let me tell him what we're doing. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play some sound into your left ear, a ch sound. Okay. I just want you to ignore that and just respond to the beeps. Okay. Okay. setting up this other channel. We have, I have two separate channels that I can work at the same time. So I'm just going to set this one for the left ear. And, then, and it's just going to play like white noise? Mm -hmm, it's, it's called narrow band noise. So it's taking the frequency that we're using over here, which is a thousand hertz, and it's going to just do some static noise right in between that okay. frequency band. So we just have to make sure that it's loud enough, covering up the other ear. So then that's what we'll play continuously the whole time. And then we will see if he can still get this. And she didn't get it there. This one will just go up in five decibel levels until we get something. And then we're at 100. There we go, we've got about 100. So then we'll turn up the masking noise in the other ear to make sure it wasn't just a fluke, which it was for that one. So we'll try 105. And we'll turn it up 5 on the other ear. Still nothing, so we'll go up again. 110 there, so we'll turn it up. There we go. We'll do it again. See if we got anything. Okay. So we actually didn't get any consistent response at 115 for a thousand hertz for this year. So that's going to mean that when the other ear is busy, he's not hearing anything. Okay. So we will do that again. And that means all the responses that we got were probably from the other ear. 